<clears throat> well, thank you, Chairman Scott, Ranking Member Thompson. And first, I'd like to associate myself with uh, the comments and remarks from my colleagues, Representative Cloud, as well as earlier Representative Allen. Uh, we are dealing with very serious supply chain uh, crises all around the country. And uh, Representative Allen hit the, hit the nail on the head earlier, talking about how here in Washington, D.C., we have empty grocery store shelves. And so while this is an important topic, I think there are far more pressing items um, in the face of what we are experiencing with historic uh, record-breaking inflation. But I'll jump right into it. I know several of these uh, topics have already been covered, and uh, I'm going to direct this to uh, Mr. Mills to bring it back to the farmer for a minute. Our farm equipment needs to function in all weather conditions, which can be a challenge in Florida's climate. EV batteries experience difficulties in extreme cold and heat, drastically reducing range and serving as a fire hazard in inclement weather and flood water. Florida, on average, we get about 56 inches of rain a year, and that's without a hurricane, and we know we're prone to those. And we're seeing that EV vehicles, such as transit buses, often rely on auxiliary heat and power systems resulting in unintended emissions. So, Mr. Mills, rather than hoping that a battery works in warm or cold uh, temperatures or relying on polluting auxiliary systems, doesn't it make sense or more sense to explore other forms of energy like the capture of farm emissions and use them in renewable natural gas powered vehicles? Well, Congressman, thank you. I think the short answer is yes. I mean, if I elaborate slightly by pointing out that I'm actually very uh, optimistic about the progress that we made in solving some of the problems that you described for batteries. I, I was an interim CEO of a large format lithium battery factory, fairly familiar with the, the where the technology is going. I'll just repeat a point I made in my original testimony. The real challenge, especially for big vehicles, trucks and farm vehicles, is the charging, the time it takes to charge and the cost of the charging systems. A supercharger, the kind that Sheets would like to install, they're about $50,000 each, more than double the cost of a gasoline pump. Those aren't good enough for charging quickly a, say a deer-sized a combine. Have to, there'll be $100,000 kind of costs for the charger. Uh, to charge these, these multi-megawatt level of systems that are required to do reasonably fast charging. So it's a, it's fundamentally, it, it, and I hate to use the word, but I'll use the word convenience problem. Convenience is more than convenience when it comes to rural America. It's, yeah. it's an operational lifestyle. So it's, it, it, these are non-trivial barriers which take a very long time to solve and cost a lot of money. Well, and I appreciate that. And you just mentioned, you know, in your experience um, as CEO and dealing with lithium batteries, you know, we, we take a little bit more of a broader geostrategic look at, at things. Um, this all reply, re relies heavily on foreign suppliers to make this initiative work. And so we know in the United States, especially under this administration, mining has become a um, extraordinarily overregulated uh, industry and has created some, some very, very tough situations for folks as we try to reassert um, our independence on, on multiple fronts. Now, especially in places with lax regulations, like China, for example, that can cause severe environmental degrega uh, degradation. And I would argue that no one does this safer, better, more efficiently than the United States, yet it seems that we are exporting our dirty work to places like China uh, in the name of green energy. Would you agree? That's exactly what we're doing. We're exporting the carbon dioxide emissions. We're exporting the jobs and we're exporting the revenues. And we're subject to the vicissitudes of the commodity market prices from other players. Just re re repeat a fact that I put in my testimony that 60 to 70% of the cost to make a battery for a car or a truck is the cost of the commodities. We don't control that because it's all foreign markets, foreign revenues, and, and foreign politics, frankly. Thank you, Mr. Bells. Now, um, Mr. Strickland, I'm going to redirect to you and and very quickly. As a growing number, uh, as a growing purchasers of many of these foreign source commodities, what steps is GM taking to ensure America's desire to make it uh, like uh, to make it like better here doesn't result in environmental catastrophe catastrophe over there? What steps are y'all taking? 
Well, we are working on our battery chemistry so that we are, have 70% reduction in cobalt um, as one example. We are members of the Institute for Responsible Mining Insurance, uh, which is another element to make sure that our partners and our supply chain um, are basically aligned to act with integrity and with safety. Uh, and also we are working right now in California and Salton Sea uh, to be able to access supplies of lithium. Uh, so we recognize the fact that we have to have great jobs here. We have to make sure that we are we are not dependent on these foreign sources, and we're working very hard to achieve that goal. Thank you. I, my time has expired. I yield back. 